Hello Flickering Myth family and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ Marino and we have a Netflix review. We are jumping into the final act of Arcane. Oh my goodness. I feel like that one SNL character that's just like, oh my god, this show has it all. Jesus, like I was not expecting the finale of this act, well the finale of this whole first season, to be this strong. I was, I don't know, I was nervous because like this was really, really good leading up to it. And sometimes with Netflix, you know, that they can, you know, they can drop the ball in the last couple episodes. So when we got to act three and I was just like, okay, episode seven was good. Episode eight was good. And oh my God, episode nine had all of the drama. That's what I was really hooked on. I'm just in love with this universe, the characters, the progression we've seen and the world building. What I was really impressed with as well is they definitely set up more seasons. I was worried that this was going to feel like a complete story and be done with right off the bat. And I'm like, no, this is definitely saying we have way more stories to tell, way more characters to introduce. And the characters we have, they have a lot more going on. Like where we end with Jinx and Vi and Caitlyn and like Victor, there is so much in the future that we're going to jump into. So for this video though, I am going to be jumping into each one of the episodes. We'll be talking about episodes seven, eight, and nine in some spoilers as well. So if you have not watched the episodes, Ugh, beware because I'm about to spoil and get into all of the things I loved. Also a little asterisk, I'm not going to talk about every single detail. There is so much happening, but if I missed your favorite moment, let me know down in the comments. There's a lot to talk about. There's also going to be some stuff you super fans are going to have to let me know. Like what is that ring symbol that we keep seeing? Tell me more about Noxus. This is all the stuff that I need you guys to help me out with. Try not to spoil too much crazy stuff that like, you know, that could be massive spoilers, but I, I have some stuff to talk about and I have some stuff that I know you all are going to love. So episode seven begins right where we left off. I know a couple of us were kind of nervous that they were going to time jump again. Really happy to see that they're continuing it. We also now see who kidnapped Vi and Caitlin. It was Echo. He is finally here. He has been working with the Firelight people and they have a really interesting little society. I really like Echo in this episode. I thought he was really interesting and had a really cool character and then there's a moment in episode eight that was awesome yeah this was really cool to see him kind of be reintroduced how he's working with vi how vi and caitlin have to now team up with these even more interesting people this is really interesting i like to see where caitlin has fully went from a top side person to realizing you know i might i might need to like hang out down here these are the more interesting people these have a lot more going on she also tries to relay this information in this whole culture that she's learned up to the top side people that does not work it's a bit hard for caitlin in these uh, in these couple episodes it's she's a character i really like but i just felt for so bad because there was so much shit she had to deal with a big factor into this was also the jace and victor drama victor is going deeper into the path of the hex core stuff he is working with singe to try to figure out something that ends up going you know ugh, we'll talk about that in a moment but we also see jace and mel's relationship we see that jace is in a weird spot he really is starting to get a little too power hungry for me in this these couple episodes i was really liking him and the way him and victor kind of like split up and then all the border drama and you know this stuff with the heimdinger the last couple episodes i was so done with him already so this just furthered my my feeling of he's down a path like I don't even think Mel was ready for the path he was going to take she seems to have guided him to so many things and look what happened and I'm just like yeah I'm interested so that's what the, the I, I like this stuff I think it's very mature it's a it's the most adult stuff into this I like the stuff with like Jinx and all that but the stuff with Mel and Jace and the political drama all the council of people I love that stuff. Also, speaking of adult-ish content, the Silco stuff in the underworld, we start seeing that like he is the mob boss we all wanted him to be. I think Silco is one of the coolest villains in all of anime, at least in this style of stuff. He is so threatening, but also has so many layers. Seeing him kind of gawk into like the little the little business meeting of all the bad people and go, mm-hmm. Oh, you guys have plans? Anyways, here's what we're doing. I think he is so powerful, but he also has that weak spot with Jinx, which is great. Jinx in this episode as well. Oof, man, she is so twisted. The stuff that she feels about Vi and seeing her with Caitlyn really throws her off, but she's also starting to realize that she's a bit alone in the scenario. As much as she wants to connect with Vi, as much as she thinks Silco is her dad, she basically only has the voices in her head, and I'm like, 
yeah, girl, it's going to be a little tough for you. All of this drama in this first episode leads us to the bridge scene, which I think is the best scene in this whole episode. It's so artful, the way the tension is, the drama. Then we also have some face-offs with character, like Echo and Jinx get to like, Mm, but hurt and it is so cool and it's just it's heavy and impactful and i feel for everything what i also really like is that caitlin and vi just basically go cool thanks for helping us echo we're gonna go do our own thing and he faces off with jinx in a epic finale when she kind of she he thinks he's gonna do it he does some like timey wimey stuff and i'm like okay let's get into that a little bit more we should probably hopefully in the next season but we also see that jinx has a trick up her sleeve blows them up and we think they are dead at the end of this episode episode we are left with such a oh my god feeling did they just do this i know they didn't but they actually got me moving on to episode eight what really intrigued me was the high political drama i've told you i've loved it from the beginning but we get more of mel's backstory we see her very brutal but pretty badass mom we also start seeing that she is in this weird spot she's so traumatized with something that happened to her at the end and then seeing the path that everyone around her goes on i think she's kind of regretting where she was and what she has done the stuff with her mom is very interesting the way her mom pushes her to certain pot spots the way her mom starts manipulating jace as well and the whole like noxus thing when she's like mm, the noxus wine's better over there and i'm like oh tell me more about this town are we gonna start seeing that it seems to be there a pretty war heavy uh, uh place as well which pushes was kind of what pushes the the uh the piltover side to kind of go more war based and really pushes jace down that path just go i'm done with the the the, the down people with the the poor people it definitely feels like this is so rich bougie people yelling at sad poor people all the time and i'm like the class conversations are so strong here i liked jason this episode but he also he really needs to come to his senses and he does a little bit in the last episode but boy does he frustrate me here a lot two of the biggest talking points from this episode is how that singed has basically singed people's life forever he has given victor some magical serum basically you know what it is that kind of allows him to be a bit more tech based he has a real full robotic leg now this also sees that victor kind of kills sky and i'm just like yo this girl really liked you it, it was one of the more like Ugh, why do we have to kill her just for the sake of advancing Victor's story? One of those like fridging kind of moments. It wasn't the worst thing ever. But what also Singed has done is manipulated Silco and Jinx to getting Jinx to be this weird monstrous powerhouse and the torture scene that he she went through with that i was so i honestly didn't think she would make it out of it but you know Silco was right she's strong she knows what she's doing i really liked this but it was just really hard to see jinx go through it the way she's still manipulating the stuff in her mind with caitlin how she's blaming caitlin for so much of the her and vi stuff and i'm like girl there was so much more going on yes Speaking of Vi, this is also a great ending episode or a great ending scene with her and Jace teaming up to kick some ass. They got their full gears and stuff, and I'm like, wow, those little uh, like gauntlets she has is cool. Jace's hammer is cool. They're interesting. There's some tension between the two, but when they need to drop that for a moment to team up, it is dope to see. This definitely feels the most video gamey, and that means I mean that in a positive way. It definitely feels very intriguing, and I like the action here, the cinematography, the, the animation all of that is stunning throughout but when they get to those action scenes it is so cool much like when uh, I was talking about echo do that time travel thing the the way they changed the animation style the visuals were so striking same thing with this fight scene they really know how to move their camera around the beauty of being animation is your camera can do whatever the hell you want so I think that is strong but it really showed off in this fight scene where they kicked some ass this episode also ends with a cliffhanger that uh, Jinx is alive and coming after uh, Caitlyn and Caitlyn girl you in danger moving to the final episode some of my biggest highlights from this was the silco and jace like teaming up in a way of basically like okay basically now jace gives silco the underworld zon is now the nation of that and he gets to run it and that doesn't go well with the council the council's like yo what and he's just like i don't care what y'all say i'm here to do what i need to do and i'm just like 
yeah, y'all wanted Jace to have power and balls, but sometimes you cannot manipulate these people. The moment they get that ounce of power, they're going to get stronger. And that is definitely what happens with Jace. He knows what he's doing. We also see Jace and Vi have a little bit more interactions at the start of this episode. They're a bit tense. They're a bit head buddy. I kind of want to see them grow as friends later on. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know what could happen with their relationship. I would like to see more because it's really strong. There's a good dynamic between the two voice actors and then with the animation. I really buy that a lot. It's some of my favorite things. That's what I love about this show is I love when characters I don't normally see kind of mixed together and I'm like, oh, I don't really get to see like Victor and or, uh, like uh, I don't really get to see like people like Jace and Silco have scenes together. Scenes with like Jace and and uh, Vi were also really strong. I don't know, maybe I wanted like a Jason, uh, Jason Jinx scene, but I don't think Jace would have walked out of that alive. Little mini moments before we get to the best part of this episode, which is that dinner scene. Heimdigger joins the Firelight uh, kind of group. Him and Echo are going to be very strong together in the future. I can see some stuff unfolding there that is going to be delicious next season. So good, so detailed, so much to offer there. Really, really like that. We also get Vi getting her uh, revenge against Silva. I don't know, that one girl who's a traitor with the other robot arm. Well, she says, hold on, I, I have my robot arms now. Let's go. And she uses like the ghost of Vander. You know, she sees like a old vision that she has that kind of motivates her to get through the fight. Really like that. These were some highlights in this. Overall, I liked it. There's some more stuff with Mel and I really like this one, but I just can't stop thinking about that dinner scene. This was the creepiest dinner scene scene since Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So Jinx sets up a very twisted dinner where she's going to invite Vi, but she's also going to invite Silco and there's a special guest Caitlyn there. And she basically just goes nuts in the scene. She's been like kind of manipulated and she has that, is it the shimmer? Is that what's in them? Is that the purple stuff? I kind of forget what is labeled the shimmer. So she has this in her. So she's a bit mutated, even more messed up in the head than she was before. We have Vi trying to push her to be the more powder but we also have Silco who's just like yeah no I made you like you cannot do it you also kind of find out that Silco was gonna maybe turn her in to kind of have his power that he wants so she's done with him she's done with Vi and I'm kind of like uh, Jinx, maybe you should be on your own. And she's just, its this is a tough scene for her. I mean, Vi is saying, like, remember our friends from back in the day. What would they want? And Silco's going crazy. Silco's about to kill Vi. And Jinx says, nah, bop, 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 bop. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Like, Caitlyn tries to stand up to her. Caitlyn gets knocked out. Don't think she's dead. I did think I see her, uh, her fingers move. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. There's a moment where uh, Jinx sits down. I'm like... Now that Silco is dead, is Jinx going to be the leader of the underworld? Because that could be dope. She's strong enough, maybe not mentally, but, you know, she's a strong character. But this is not where the episode ends. She makes one giant bold move. She sends a rocket to the tower with the console. And I'm just like, that how that, that that's how we're ending? Like, I, oh my goodness, we're going to have to think about so much. We have the Heimdinger stuff. We have like the Victor stuff, you know, building for the next season. But this is the big cliffhanger to let us know who survived. I definitely think Mel did because it seems like she had some Spidey Sense moment where she said, mm, what is that? What's going on here? Mm, well, let's go. And right before it gets in, she kind of turns back around. So is she going to be able to save Jace in that moment? Hopefully Victor as well. Or maybe that explains why Victor is going to go full tech person. Yeah, these three episodes were strong, oh my god worthy, and had so many crazy things. If I missed something major in these three episodes, let me know down in the comments below, because we have so much to cover in these episodes. This was overwhelming, but in the best way. All right, everyone, that is it for my reviews of Arcane Act 1, 2, and 3. You can find the other acts on this channel, but Act 3 is done, and I had a blast with it. For me, walking into this knowing nothing about League of Legends, I am so impressed. Loving this universe, loving these characters, think this is such a strong outing. Honestly, one of Netflix's best television shows, animated or not, in a long time. After watching Cowboy Bebop, after seeing stuff like Squid Game was good this year and things like that, but Arcane is going to be a big hit for them. This was a strong way of ending everything but what did you all think did you like the ending did you like this show as a whole let me know your feelings down in the comments below subscribe to flickering myth because we make videos like this every single week and give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy all right everyone let's talk about arcane act one two three i don't care let's talk about it all down below